rechargeable, and lightweight, lithium batteries have changed our lives on the way we communicate, move, and work. Let's see how they were born and how they work. These batteries have revolutionized the way of storing energy since the early 90s. The real protagonist is lithium. This metal is the lightest solid element in nature. Pure lithium is unstable, but more common is a positively charged lithium ion, which is formed by the release of an electron. Thanks to the positive charge of this particle, these batteries can be charged over and over without reducing efficiency. To understand how this battery works, first it's important to remember how this great invention was discovered. In the 1970s, as the world was affected by the oil crisis and was looking for alternative sources of energy, Stanley Whittingham was working in the energy field at Exxon and was researching solutions to the problem of energy storage inside rechargeable batteries. The British researcher was immediately struck by the ability of lithium to easily donate electrons and his studies led him to use metal lithium as the anode of the battery. That is the negative electrode from which electrons move. Instead of the cathode, Whittingham used a metal made of titanium disulfide, a compound that can store lithium ions inside. Whittingham's battery worked like this. The lithium ions and electrons moved from the anode to the cathode with titanium disulfide. Then they were brought back when the battery was charged. The only problem with this battery was the lithium metal used in the anode which caused explosions. Even if some changes were made, Whittingham's work was discontinued due to the oil price fall. During the 80s, the American chemist John Goodenough realized that by changing the cathode's constitution, it would be possible to increase the power of the batteries by replacing the titanium disulfide with cobalt oxide, and he discovered they generated 4 volts, twice the power of Whittingham's batteries. The need for lighter and more powerful batteries gave necessary impulse to research. Akira Yoshino was considered the third protagonist of the evolution of the lithium battery. He thought he could use petroleum coke for the constitution of the anode material to house the lithium ions in a similar way to what had been done by cobalt oxide in the cathode. The result was a stable, lightweight, and safe product, ready to become a commercial product. In fact, these advances allowed Sony and Asahi Kase to start selling these batteries in 1991. As we have previously described, the main feature of a lithium-ion battery is the composition of its anode and cathode. There are many types of lithium-ion batteries, each with different characteristics and applications. For example, cobalt oxide lithium batteries are specific for smartphones and laptops. They are formed by a cobalt oxide cathode and a graphite anode. In the automotive sector, on the other hand, the batteries of electric vehicles have a particular chemical composition, lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt. With this composition, the battery charge is optimized and maximum energy is provided. Furthermore, thanks to the nickel, the battery obtains a high specific energy, while the manganese microcrystals form a three-dimensional structure that favors the flow of electrons reducing the electrical resistance and allowing a control of the current. This is because electrons pass through microscopic channels. This structure, in fact, looks like a grid of crystals. This type of battery can have different cathode combinations. 1-1-1, wherein a part of nickel, a part of manganese, and a part of cobalt are present. Or... 532. Because of the high cost of cobalt, battery manufacturers are trying to replace it in favor of nickel.
If you found this video useful, please let us know by leaving a like and a comment. You can also share it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Visit JawsCompany.com to find out our next projects.